Bracket the Yahawa, Bracket the Yahawa Shai, Bracket the Yahawa, Bracket the Yahawa Shai, Bracket the Yahawa, Bracket the Yahawa Shai, Ka Halaimla, Awawaha, Ayahaya Nawa Yahawa, Bahashem, Yahawa Shai, Bahashem, Racha Kodash. Double honors to the head apostles of Great Millstone, who do rule well and teach well with sound doctrine. Shalom unto the elders and the elder bishops of Great Millstone as well. Peace, love, salutations, and blessings unto the hopeful elect. The men, women, and children listening and learning from the servants of prophets, Yahweh Bashim Yashai, and a hearty shalom to those servants of prophets teaching and preaching in truth and sincerity, building up the tabernacle of David in these last days through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yashai, giving diligence to make their calling and election sure. Shalom, shalom. And last but not least, a hearty shalom to the men of valor and DTA camps spread all across Babylon the Great prophesying the downfall of this wicked kingdom as well. So back at you with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yashai. Adon Rathazah, Yahweh Rathazah, may the lesson be edifying. And the lesson is going to be titled, this lesson, better yet, is going to be titled, The Doors of Mercy Are Closing. Do you have your garments? Once again, the doors of mercy are closing. Do you have your garments? And as you can see, you know, a lot of things are happening as it pertains to biblical prophecy. Scoffers popping up, you know, teaching doctrines of devils, you know, denying Yahweh Shai, denying their name. You know, also simultaneously why those things are happening, which is a part of end time prophecy. You know, in the last days, there shall come scoffers, so on and so forth. While those scoffers are getting addressed and being put to shame through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yashai, simultaneously, Esau Edom is looking to crown his enterprise. Talks of war. Rumors of war. You have the the great pestilence that's basically, you know, on the verge of shutting down economies worldwide. A major famine. And also, the famine of the word is on the horizon as well. As well as this man, you know, is looking to push that thing this year. You know, so you have a lot of things that are pertained to biblical end time prophecy happening. And once again, the doors of mercy are closing. Do you have your garments or do you have the garment? So let's go into the scriptures. And we'll start with the book of St. John, the 10th chapter in the first verse. And it reads as such, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. And that door is Yahweh Shai. The only way you can get to the Heavenly Father. I'm going to read it again. John 10 and 1. Verily, verily, truly, truly, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. And you have men denying Yahweh Shai, denying his rank, you know, pushing, you know, fringes, fringes, fringes. And not pushing Yahweh Shai or prophecy at all. And the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. Pursuant to the book of Revelation, the 19th chapter and the 10th verse. Let's go to John 10 and 9. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. I'm going to read again, John 
10 and 9, the book of St. John, the 10th chapter and the 9th verse. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Plain as day. Yahweh is the door. The only way you can get access to the Heavenly Father and the only way you can get the Spirit is because of Yahweh Shai's sacrifice, you know you're an Israelite. Let's keep it going. Revelation 3 and 20. Behold, I stand at the door. That door is your mind. And knock. That door in this verse, buddy, it is your mind. Revelation 3 and 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, the door of your mind, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. He'll give you the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the scriptures. You know, starting with the milk and eventually the Racha Kodash, you know, after a while, which is going to reveal all things. Revelation 3 and 21, to him that overcometh, and that's our goal is to overcome, to see the fall of our enemy, you know, to get crowned on crowning day. We're doing this for salvation. And we push Yahweh Shai. Revelation 3 and 21. To him that overcometh. Will I grant to sit with me in my throne. Even as I also overcame. I am set and am set down. With my father in his throne. So we're going to get. You know the heavenly body. Just like Yahweh Shai. If we endure until the end man. And that's the goal of the truth is to endure until the end and to get victory over the beast, the mark, his image, and his name. To see the fall of our enemies, man. You know, rulership, immortality. That's what's on the line, man. And you're not going to obtain immortality through fringes, man, or the law. It's going to come through Yahweh Shai. Revelation 3 and 21, to him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. That's victory right there. Even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. But to overcome, you got to have the right doctrine, man. Revelation 3 and 8, I know thy works, Behold, I have set before thee an open door. And that open door is referring to Yahweh Shai. And no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength and hast kept my word and has not denied my name. That means you got to know the name. And the elect shall praise the holy name. Of the Heavenly Father and His Son. Pursuant to Sirach. The 17th chapter and the 10th verse. Let's go into this word for name right here. Just want to show it to you. In the Strong's. Let's read it again. Revelation 3 and 8. I know thy works. Behold I have set before thee an open door. Yahweh Shai. And no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength. And has kept my word and has not denied my name. Well, to not deny the name, you got to know the name. And if you go into the word in the Greek for name in Revelation 3 and 8, it's Strong's G for Greek 3686. And let's let him say it. Strong's G, 3686, Anima, Anima. Now let's get right to the point. The name 
is used for everything which the name covers everything for one's authority rank command excellences you know so they're not respecting Yahweh Shai's authority you know they're denying his authority they're denying his rank by trying to climb up some other way and obtain salvation through you know the law and we're under a grace period right now you know we're under grace now we establish the law and we keep the law to the best of our abilities but you know our forefathers went off because they couldn't keep the law man you're in Babylon the great because of our forefathers breaking the law man and Yahweh Shem Shai set it up that way so you wouldn't be able to obtain salvation on your own. You need you would need his son. You would need the Messiah. You would need, you know, a mediator. John 14 and 6, the book of Saint John 14 and 6, Yahweh Shai saith unto him, I am the way the truth and the life no man cometh unto the father but by me Yahweh is the way that same angel that's talked about in the book of Exodus the 23rd chapter the 21st and 20th verses man Exodus 23 and 20 and 21 let's just get it Exodus 23 and 20. Let's lock it for the internet where I'm at. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not. For he will not pardon your transgressions. For my name is in him. Yahweh, Yahweh Shai. You got to say Yahweh to say Yahweh Shai. And obeying his voice is to obey his prophets, his true prophets that he sent in these last days that have his report. You know? Because Yahweh Shai is not going to come off the throne and break the word down to you. He's going to send his men. And where the word of a king is, there is power. And he said that he would give power, you know, unto his men in these last days. Pursuant to Acts 1 and 8, you know, Revelation uh, 11 and 3. You know what I'm saying? Let's keep it going. <clears throat> Romans. The second chapter in the 28th verse for he is not a Jew which is one outwardly and these men who are boasting in the law boasting in fringes they're doing it all for the outward appearance you know they haven't cleaned up the inner man Romans 2 and 28 for he is not a Jew which is one outwardly Boasting in fringes, wanting to wear fringes, you know, to the, the wing stop, you know, on Saturday night to be seen of men. But won't teach the word, won't make one lesson, won't go out to the highways and byways and make your body a living sacrifice, you know. Romans 2 and 28, for he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. Romans 2, and, Romans 2 and 29, but he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. And this isn't talking about spiritual Israelites. This is talking about being renewed in your mind, you know. Putting on as the elect. 
being a, becoming a new man, putting away the old man, you know, being groomed into royalty. Romans 2 and 29, but he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart, of the mind, in the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of the Most High. And we do all these lessons to, you know, praise and push Yahweh Ba Shem Shai, not ourselves, you know. And it's all praises to Yahweh Ba Shem Shai that we have the understanding. And that's a constant prayer that goes up with sincere brothers, man. You know, Psalms, the 51st chapter, you know, cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Let's go into this uh, word for letter. Let's let him say it. So it's Strong's G 1121 Grandma. Salakia, Internet's a little slow where I'm at. So it's Strong's G for Greek, 1121, Grandma. Grandma. Strong's G, 1121, Grandma. Grandma. And it goes into, right to the point, a letter, any writing, a document or record, a letter, an epistle, the sacred writings of the Old Testament. So let's read it again. For he is a Jew which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, of the mind, in the spirit, and not in the letter, in the law, you know, whose praise is not of men, but of the Most High. And boasting in the law, you're basically omitting Yahweh Shah. You're saying that you don't really, you don't need Yahweh Shah, you know? You're saying that Yahweh Shah is dead in vain. Let's keep it going. Second Corinthians, the third chapter. Let's read one down to six. Do we begin to commend ourselves? And you have these guys who are pushing fringes and pushing the law. They're basically commending themselves. You know? And Yahweh Shimei Shai hates pride. You know? And that's a proud mentality to say that, you know, you don't basically to omit Yahweh Shai and say you don't you don't need Yahweh Shai. You, you can do it on your own. Second Corinthians three and one, do we begin again to commend ourselves? Or need we, as some others, epistles of condemnation to you or letters of condemnation from you? Ye are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read of all men. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Hamashiach, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living power, not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart. And that's what we're declaring, you know, is the new covenant. You know, we're ministers of the new covenant. You know? We're pushing the vibration of, you know, the kingdom, man. That's what we're supposed to do. Preach the gospel of the kingdom, you know, and in the kingdom, the real immortals, the elect are going to get perfection. And it's not going to be through the law. It's going to be through Yahweh Shai, who's going to change our vile bodies. And I say we humbly, you know. Second Corinthians three and three and three, for as much 
as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Hamashiach ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living power, not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart. And such trust have we through Hamashiach to Godward, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of the Most High, who had made us able ministers of the New Testament, of the New Covenant. Ministers of the New Covenant, you know, declaring the kingdom. Prophesying against Esau, you know. And at the same time, building up the tabernacle of David, the spiritual priesthood, you know, the spiritual house, the spiritual ark. And once again, the doors of mercy are closing. As we get closer to the end, the doors of mercy are closing. And who was the one that, that closed the door on the first ark? You know, Noah's ark. It was Yahweh the same one is going to close the doors of mercy on the spiritual ark pretty soon. So you can't get around Yahweh Shai. There's no way of getting around him, man. Second Corinthians 3 and 6, who also had made us able ministers of the New Testament, the New Covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit, for the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. Let's read it in the NLT. And under the, you know, the, the old covenant, you know, the Old Testament laws, you know, you get put to death, you know, for a lot of the, the, the iniquities that you commit, you know, I'm speaking for myself as well. So we need mercy, man. We need Yahweh Shai. Second Corinthians three, I'm going to read one down to six. Are we beginning to praise ourselves again? And he had men praising themselves, basically in mortal flesh, boasting in the law, but drinking out of, you know, plastic bottles made out of pork. And if you're going to push the law, the law, the law, the law, the law, the law, then you're omitting your how shy. And if you've broken one commandment, you've broken them all. James two and 10. Are ye, are we like others who need to bring you letters of recommendation or who ask you to write such letters on their behalf? Surely not. The only letter of recommendation we need is you yourselves, you, Slaki, your lives are a letter written in our hearts. Everyone can read it and recognize our good work among you. Clearly, you are a letter from Hamashiach showing the result of our ministry among you. This letter is not written with pen and ink, but with the spirit of the living power. It is not carved on tablets of stone, but on human hearts. We are confident of all this because of our great trust in the Most High through Hamashiach. That's faith. And that's a gift from Yahweh Bashim Yahshai. It is not that we think we are qualified to do anything on our own. Our qualification comes from the Most High, who has enabled us to be ministers of his new covenant. This is a covenant not of written laws, but of the spirit. The old written covenant ends in death. But under the law, it's like it, but under the new covenant, the spirit gives life. And our forefathers, they couldn't keep the law, statutes, and commandments, you know, in this flesh. Let me see. Um, yep. 
Ephesians 2 and 8, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of the Most High. So through grace we're saved, man. You know? Through faith. You know? By grace through faith we're saved. And that's a gift from the Heavenly Father through His Son. Not through the law, man. Just to pound the point home, Romans 7 and 6. But now we are delivered from the law in the form of, from the letter of the law, in the form of the, the punishment through grace, through faith in Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. You know? But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead when we were held that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. Now, once again, we establish the law, but we know through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahshai, the law isn't what's going to save you. It's grace, mercy, you know, obedience, and belief in Yahweh Shai. Romans 3 and 31, do we make void the law? Through faith, Yahweh forbid, yea, we establish the law. Hope this is making sense, you know. Galatians 2 and 20. I am crucified with Hamashiach, nevertheless I live, yet not. And we're crucified all day, you know, killing off the old man and becoming the new creature. Putting off the old man. Becoming renewed every day through the spirit. I am crucified with Hamashiach. Galatians 2 and 20. I am crucified with Hamashiach. Nevertheless, I live, yet not. But Hamashiach liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of the Most High. Who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of Yahweh. For if righteousness come by the law, then Hamashiach is dead in vain. Plain as day. You know? For you guys don't want to push the law, the law, the law, the law, the law, instead of pushing Yahweh Shah in prophecy. Where well, you're going to be judged according to the letter of the law. And that's not what you want, man. Galatians 5 and 4. Hamashiach is become no effect unto you. You're saying you can do it on your own. Whoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. You're fallen from mercy. That means you're going to get judged according to the letter of the law. And that's not what you want, man. That's not what I want, you know. I need mercy, man. We all need mercy. Galatians 5 and 4 in the NLT. And we're going to the blue letter next. Galatians 5 and 4 in the NLT. You who are trying to be justified by the law have been alienated from Hamashiach. You, you, it's like you, have fallen away from grace. Let's go into this word. For Slakia. <clears throat> Come on. Slakia now. The internet wants to act up. But this word, I was trying to go into it in the blue letter. Slakia for the internet speed. Let's just pull it up. So the word for. None effect unto you. It's all bunched together. In the Greek, it's categorial. I was trying to show it to you on the screen, but... Okay, yeah. So it's, it says, Galatians 5 and 4, Hamashiach is become of no effect unto you. And if you go into this word right here, for none effect unto you, no effect unto you, it's categorial. Category, basically. Let's let him say it. 
Strong's G 2673 Catargeo Catargeo Yep Categorial Category basically It puts you in the category of being abolished delivered to be destroyed do away you're that dross you know fail you're going to fail just like our forefathers did you know put away put down vanish away destroy you're going to lose fall it says to render idle unemployed Woo. and we work for the king of the universe man and to be unemployed no longer in the business you know <laughs> that's not a good that's not a good look man that's not something you want you know inactivate he's going to inactivate your spirit and these men have inactivated spirits they're reprobates man we're just going to call it straight call it what it is man to deprive a force influence power and that's what you guys are doing to Yahweh Shai you're depriving him of his force you know in the form of not wanting to reverence Yahweh Shai and pushing the law. When the law isn't what's going to save you or perfect you, it's Yahweh Shai. Let me see. To cause to cease, to put an end to, do away with, annul, abolish. And that's going to be your fate, you know, for making. Yahweh Shai, you know, not the the uh, the centerpiece, you know, of your ministry, man. Galatians five and four, Yahamashiach, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai is become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. So you're going to be judged according to the letter of the law. And that's not what you want, man. Romans 8 and 3, for what the law could not do and that it was weak through the flesh. These chains of darkness, man, you know, they're going to drive you to go off, you know, here and there, man. You know, you may, um, you know, there's, there's sins that are committed all the time, man, you know, knowingly and unknowingly, man, you know. And that's where grace comes in, man. You're eating GMOs, you know. If you're eating vegetables, most likely. That's going off, man. You know? And that's why we need Yahweh Shai, man. I can go on and on with the examples of, you know, sins that are committed, man. But those that pick up what's being put down, you know, they, they, they know what's going on. I mean, they know what I'm talking about. Romans 8 and 3, for what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, Hamashiach sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. So Yahweh Shai was the only one that could condemn sin in the flesh as far as being perfect in this, in this body, you know? He was, he's the only one that could do it, man. He's the only one that's done it. And pushing that vibration of the law, the law, the law, the law, the law, the law, the law fringes, you're omitting your Shai and saying, basically, you want to be judged according to the letter of the law. And in that case, you're, you know, you're worthy of death, you know, because there's no mercy when it comes to that, man. You're omitting the only one that could forgive transgressions. Next part. So let's go in, let's go into the garment. <clears throat> so Baruch 5 and 1 put off O Jerusalem Yerushalayim put off O Jerusalem the garment of mourning and affliction 
and put on the comeliness of the glory that cometh from the Most High forever. The new man, you know, this doctrine, this the proper wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the scriptures, which is going to lead to immortality for the elect, you know. Baruch 5 and 2, cast about thee a double garment of righteousness, which cometh from the Most High, and set a diadem on thine head of the glory of the everlasting capital E you know Yahweh the author and finisher of our faith let's go into this word diadem a diadem is a type of crown that's that's the end goal you want to get that crown a diadem is a type of crown specifically an ornament headband an ornament headband worn by monarchs and others as a badge of royalty. And that's what we are. We're royalty in exile. You know. To those who endure to the end. Uncrowned kings. You know. Kings and priests. And that's who Yahweh Bashim Yahashai is grooming. You know. And that's what the true doctrine will give you. A ruling class mentality. Through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahashai. You don't think the same way you used to, man. You know, and that's who Yahweh Bashim Yahashai is grooming. Future rulers in the kingdom to come. Let's read it again. Baruch 5 and 2. Cast about thee a double garment of the righteousness which cometh from the Most High, and set a diadem, a crown, upon thine head of the glory of the everlasting. And it all starts out in your mind. Like the elder Yashawamba has said uh, plenty of times, victory starts in the minds of the elect. You putting on the new man, you know, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahashai, it starts with this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, you know, and then putting that into action. Isaiah 61 and 1. The spirit of Adawan Yahweh Shimashai power is upon me because he had anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. And our people are bound, you know, spiritually and mentally. In Babylon the Great, still in captivity, you know, or proclaiming liberty unto them, man, you know, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahashai. Letting them know that this is the doctrine that leads, you know, to immortality, to being free in your mind, to changing your mindset, man, you know, to you looking at things through royal lenses, man, you know, in the spirit. It changes your outlook on just <laughs> like it, you know, everything, man. And it all starts with the, with, the, with the thought, you know, in the form of victory starting in the minds of the elect. And it starts out with you getting this word and being able to receive it in its purest form. Isaiah 61 and 2, to proclaim the acceptable year of Adawan Yahweh Bashim Yahashai, and the day of vengeance of our power to comfort all that mourn. And that's what we're proclaiming, the kingdom. You know? Isaiah 61 and 3. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, and to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel, you know? Let your lights be shining, uh, roughly paraphrasing, you know? Let your loins be girded about with truth, 
and their lights constantly burning, we got to have oil to do that. You know, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. The garment of praise, you know, that they might be called trees of righteousness. And pursuant to the book of Mark, you know, men are compared to as trees. Uh, Mark the 8th chapter, I think it's 8 and 24. That they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of Adonai Yahweh Shem Yashai, that he may be glorified. Not us, through the law, you know. Not your fringes, man. That Yahweh Shem Yashai may be glorified. And a lot of these jakes, man, they just push this to be seen of men. This is what I seen on social media the other day, uh, literally today. A brother sent this. Um, I'll just show it to you guys. <laughs> Uh, it's like I'm still getting over the sicknesses, you know, coming out of my system slowly but surely. But look at this, you know. This is just too much, man. And once again, you know, the fringe lights strike again. And this is the spirit of over-righteousness with this, man. This is just too much. This is over the top, man. You know? And this is to be seen of men. Once again, merchandising the truth, making it commercial. And these guys, if you w walk up to these guys and ask them, what's Revelation 13, uh, 16 through 18 mean? They're going to tell you it's an embargo. You know, it's philosophies in your mind. Ach. When this man is going digital, everything. And once again, this is the year that these guys who don't have the correct understanding, they're not going to be able to run away from that prophecy, man. You know, the vision is loud and clear and it's speaking. You know, Yahweh Shem Yahashai is causing that proverb to cease amongst Israel. And you're going to have to give answers this year, man. This is the year of the amplification. <clears throat> Let's keep it going. Revelation 16 and 15. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments. Now, is this a physical garment? Or is this something spiritual? Lest he walk naked and they see his shame. I'm going to read again. Revelation 16 and 15. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments. The wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. This truth. This doctrine, which is going to lead to immortality for the elect, you know? Lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Isaiah 52 and 1, awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion, put on thy beautiful garments. Let's get, um, there's a precept that just came to mind. Uh, let's get Revelation 3 and 11. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast. The garment, this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. The truth, the true doctrine. That no man take thy crown. I'm going to read it again. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Isaiah 52 and 1 again. Awake, awake. Put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, O Yerushalem, the holy city. For henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. You know, those who aren't circumcised in the heart. You know, you haven't changed and become a new man. You're not going to be able to receive the beautiful garments. You know, th this true doctrine in its purest form. And you have those men who are in that lot showing their ugly faces, man. You know, basically saying it's all about them. 
pushing carnality, you know? For the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit. And those, you know, epistles, they're not written and worded like that for no reason because there's men who are going to be in that lot and we're starting to see those men for who they are. The, and the spirit is hopping on men to call you guys out. Isaiah 52 and 1 again from the top. Awake, awake, put on thy strength. O Zion, put on thy beautiful garments. O Jerusalem, the holy city, for henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. The heathen nations who are outside the temple and those who've been rejected from the foundations of the earth to not receive this word. You know? Not all Israel's of Israel. You know? The Israel of the Most High. You know? That's all you, who Yahweh Bashim Yashai is dealing with in, the, in, in this eon, in this age. Isaiah 52 and 2. Shake thyself from the dust. Arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the bands off thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. And that starts with this word going on, man. You know? Let's go to the book of Sirach 6 and 22. For wisdom is according to her name. She is not manifest unto many. You know? For it's given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. To them it is not given. Sirach 6 and 23, give ear my son, receive my advice, and refuse not my counsel. That reminds me of Proverbs, the fourth chapter, you know? Let's just get it because it complements it. Um, yeah, Proverbs 4 and 1. Hear ye children the instruction of a father and attend to no understanding. Proverbs 4 and 2. For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. You know, so we don't forsake the law. You know, we establish the law. But there's laws that are given in the Apocrypha. You know, there's laws that Paul gave. And you got a lot of men omitting those laws. Prophesying with their head covered. You know, Yahweh Shai said um, to not bring staves to camp. Agree with thy adversary quickly, but you got Adam Abbott getting cuffed up on camera, man. And that was spiritual because that's a camp that doesn't teach the proper breakdown of Revelation the 13th chapter, 16 through 18, but they have the nerve to, and, and the gall to call their camp Watchmen for Israel. And they just did a five-hour breakdown, uh, allegedly obliterating the lunar Sabbath. When the lunar Sabbath, the lunar Sabbath slacket is biblical, you know. It doesn't matter really, you know. As long as you're keeping the Sabbath, cool. But it, you know, the lunar Sabbath is biblical, man. If you want to get technical about it, you know, we're not supposed to have you know strife about, you know, that particular topic, you know. To keep it technical, you know, as long as you're keeping the Sabbath cool, but the, the Sabbath is based on the moon, man. Just to keep it 1,000, man. But as long as you're keeping the Sabbath, hey, you know, call out y'all Basham Yashai. But once again, you know, these guys who have these wayward doctrines, man, they're starting to pop up left and right. And that's a part of end time prophecy. In the last days, there shall be scoffers, you know, evil men shall wax worse and worse. Sirach 6 and 24 and put thy feet into her fetters and thy neck into her chain talking about wisdom bow down thy shoulder and bear her and be not grieved with her bonds come unto her with thy whole heart be not double-minded, man, you know, and keep her ways with all thy power. 
Search and seek, and she shall be made known unto thee. And when thou hast got hold of her, let her not go. Which reminded me of, you know, a precept that just came out. You know, Revelation 3 and 11. You know? Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, this truth, the garment, the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, that no man take thy crown. Let's keep it going. Sirach 6 and 28. For at the last thou shalt find her rest, and that shall be turned to thy joy. Then shall her fetters be a strong defense for thee, and her chains a robe of glory. Let's get Brooke the fifth chapter again. Brute 5 and 2, cast about thee a double garment of the righteousness which cometh from the Most High, and set a diadem, a crown, upon thine head of the glory of the everlasting. Now let's just back it up with another precept. Salakia, uh, Salakia, well, Salakia. <laughs> I, mean, I didn't mean to say Salakia, Sarak. Um, 1, I think it's 1, and uh, I want to say... Wisdom is the crown of righteousness. It's just, uh, I think it's about 18 or so. Yep. <clears throat> Sirach 1 and 18. The fear of the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yashai, is a crown of wisdom, making peace and perfect help to flourish. Both which are the gifts of the Most High, faith. And it enlargeth their rejoicing that love him. Sirach 6 and 29 again. Then shall her feathers be a strong defense for thee and her chains a robe of glory. Cast thee about a double uh, robe of righteousness. Roughly paraphrasing. Just get brute 5 and 2 again. Brute 5 and 2. Cast about thee a double garment of righteousness, which cometh from the Most High, and set a diadem on thine head of the glory of the everlasting. And that's what we're doing this for, for that that diadem set on our heads from Yahweh, you know, and to hear well dug, well done, it's like a well done, good and faithful servant. And he's not going to be saying well done, good and faithful servant to men who are saying not to worship him, man. That's just not going to happen, man, unless you repent. But once again, the doors of mercy are closing. Do you have the right garment, you know? Or do you have the covering of Esau Edom, you know? Or have you put your trust in men and took in that covering? Do you have on a wedding garment, you know? Sirach 6 and 30, for there is a golden ornament upon her, and her bands are purple lace. And in the law, uh, it goes back to, you know, you have the fringes with the border of blue, you know, so that those fringes are spiritual now, man, you know, because the fringes are a reminder to keep the law, you know. Just like right now, you know, um, back then we had a temple, but now the temple is the believers. You know, the temple is spiritual now. Just want to add that example. 
Sirach 6 and 31, thou shalt put her on as a robe of honor and shalt put her about thee as a crown of joy. Talking about the proper wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the scriptures, man. The robe, you know, the garment. Sirach 6 and 30 again, for there is a golden ornament upon her and her bands are purple lace or a border of blue, you know. Sirach 6 and 31, thou shalt put her on as a robe of honor and shall put her about thee as a crown of joy. So the fringes represented you have in the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to not You know, break the law. That that's what it's symbolic of, man. You don't have to look at fringes to know that you're not supposed to eat a bacon cheeseburger sandwich, or go, you know, over to your ox house and try to pull his wife, you know, or to leave camp. I mean, you, you lighten up a fat blunt, you know. Jeremiah 17 and 5. Thus saith the Lord, Adonai Yahweh Shimei Ashai, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and make flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. So you're making flesh your arm. You're trusting in man, you know, and that's the wrong garment to have. That's the wrong covering to have, you know. And that, that's those men who are omitting Yahweh Shai. That's what they're doing. You know? Jeremiah 17 to 5 again from the top. Thus saith the Lord, Adwan Yahweh Bashim Shai, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man and maketh flesh his arm. That's what you're doing. You're making flesh your covering. And whose heart departed from Yahweh Bashim Shai. And that means Yahweh Bashim Yahashai has stripped the spirit away from you and your mind's departed from Adawan Yahweh Bashim Yahashai. And you think you could do it on your own. And basically you are on your own. You know? Unless you repent, you're going to be judged according to the letter of the law. And in that case, it's automatic. Automatic finito, man. You know? Because if you've broken one, you've broken, you've broken them all. That's why you need mercy. That's why you need Yahweh Shai. And he's the only one that could grant mercy. And that goes back to the law. Exodus 23 and 20 and 21. So that's the trick bag Yahweh Bashim Yahashai puts you in. You know, to have to need his son. No way around it, man. Zephaniah 1 and 7. Hold thy peace at the presence of Adawan Yahweh Bashim Yahashai power for the day of the Lord Yahweh Shimei Ashai is at hand and the day is at hand we're getting closer to the finish line man you know oh, let's get that uh, John 17 and 6 that's the goal is to finish man John 17 and 6 come on internet Um, just lock in. Uh -oh. Maybe five. Yeah, John 17 to 4, just lock in. I have glorified thee on earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And that's what you want to, that's what you want to be doing, man. You know, be doing the work that I don't want you to help about Shemiah Shai sent you to do on the right hand side and to finish man John 17 to 4 I've glorified thee on the earth I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do that's our our ultimate goal is to finish man that's perfection finishing
Zephaniah 1 and 7, Hold thy peace at the presence of Adonai Yehawah B'Hashim Yahashai Power, for the day is at hand, for the Lord Yehawah B'Hashim Yahashai had prepared a sacrifice, he had bid his guests, those to be destroyed and those to be delivered, you know, the dross, at the same time, those said to be beamed up and crowned. Zephaniah 1 and 8, it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all as such as are clothed with strange apparel. Now, there was a uh, video that went out that Elder Manantha Zakba did. I think it was a, a repost video where the guy from WFI uh, who, who had dreads at the time, he's cut him off now was basically trying to push fringes on a brother, you know, a new brother into into the truth, most likely, and saying that, you know, um, fringes are die, basically. Fringe or die, you know? And that uh, the strange apparel was talking about, you know, strange clothing in the form of, you know, from from the other nations, uh, so on and so forth. I, 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 I don't want to butcher the way he said it, but... The strange apparel is going into different doctrines and philosophies, man. You know, you're taking the covering of Esau, Edom. Just going to the blue letter. Let's just bring it up. You know? Not a physical covering, you know. You're, you're letting, you know, um, let's just go into the blue letter. Slaki. Lost the train of thought. But this word right here for um, <clears throat> for clothe is labas, right? I'm going to read it again. Zephaniah 1 and 8, And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. Being clothed with strange apparel is having the covering of Esau, Edom, you know, having the covering of Babylon, the great, you know, as far as their, their ways, their philosophy, serving their gods, you know, having Buddha as your covering, having Allah as your covering, having JC, you know, Sant, uh, Santeria, you know, as your covering. That's what it's talking about being clothed with strange apparel. And specifically, the covering of Babylon the Great. Let's go into this word, clothed, right here. And the word is Strong's H for Hebrew, 3847. Labas. Strong's H, 3847. Lavash. 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 And it says to dress. Second entry. Lavash. Lavash. And it goes into clothe, wear, apparel, apparel, clothe, to dress, wear, clothe, put on, be clothed, right? But this is talking about a spiritual, you know, a strange apparel, not physical strange apparel. And it says... So it's talking about a, a covering, a garment, you know, a spiritual one, not a physical one. And it goes into stranger, strange, strange woman, foreign alien, foreign woman, harlot. Now, let's go into Revelation 17 to 5. Let's get a, a better understanding of what this is talking about, you know? Let's see. Yep. So this is a Revelation 17 and 3. I'm going to read down to 5. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting upon a scarlet-colored beast, having the names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. This is talking about Babylon the Great, you know? 
Revelation 17 and 4, and the woman was arrayed in purple, and purple is symbolic of, of royalty or rulership, you know, so on and so forth. And Esau, Edom, he's in his rulership. You know, he's in his heaven right now. And that's why the woman was dressed in purple, because Esau, Edom, has got the whole world drunk off of his wine, the wine of his fornication. You know, drunk off Christianity. You know, drunk off, um, you know, black unconsciousness, which is an invention of Esau, Edom. You know, if you go into the fathers of Egyptology, you'll find out that they're all Edomites, man, who fed you that garbage to tie you back to ham and call you African, which is a name that he made up. You know? Getting the whole world drunk off of the LGBTQ XYZ nasty people movement. Trying to get people and sell people the uh, the wine of pedophilia now and normalizing it, man. You know? Trying to give you that karagma. You know? Giving everybody the Kool-Aid that he can in the world right now. You know what Kool-Aid we're talking about. The juicy juice. You know? And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Revelation 17 to 5. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon, the great mother of harlots and abominations in the earth. So let's read this again. And this is the covering that you don't want to have. This is the garment that you don't want to have. You know? Zephaniah 1 and 7. This is talking about the end days. It's the end time dark saying. Zephaniah 1 and 7. Hold thy peace at the presence of the Lord, Yahweh Shem Yashai power. For the day of the Lord is at hand. That's talking about the end times. For the Lord Yahweh Shem Yashai had prepared a sacrifice. He had bid his guests those to be destroyed and those to be delivered. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice when a drosh is set to be burnt up, you know, when those who are set to be delivered are going to be delivered, that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. This is the end time prophecy. So it's talking about the strange apparel in the form of you taking the, the covering of Esau Edom, taking the covering of Moab and, you know, worshiping Buddha and whatnot, man, you know? Zephaniah 1 and 9. In the same day also I will punish all those that leap on the threshold, which fill their master's houses with violence and deceit. Esau Edom, who's built his whole empire upon the rape, robbery, and murder of the children of Israel and doing it to the other heathen nations as well. This nigga didn't colonize Africa, man. He's looking to colonize space now. That's that vagabond, you know? And also, double-fold those that don't teach the true correct doctrine, you know, which are filling, you know, you jakes up with a carnal mentality, you know, the ISUPK spirit pushing, you know, uh, the vibration of packing heat, you know, you're going to out, outgun Esau with his own blessing, you know, the Grandmaster J's out there, you know, filling you guys up with the spirit of carnality and deceit and violence to get destroyed. And that's actually Yahweh Bashim Yahshai using a false prophet to destroy you because you weren't chosen from the foundations of the earth, man. For the deceived and the deceiver are his, man. And if you, if a prophet be deceived, I, the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahshai, have deceived that prophet. Ezekiel 14 and 9. So that's pretty much it. Um, you know, the covering that you want to have is the garment, man. You know, which is this truth. The wisdom, the proper wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the scriptures, man. You know, 
and the fringes are, are spiritual now, man. You know, you don't need to have fringes on to remind yourself, you know, to walk in the spirit and not, you know, go eat a barbecue pork sandwich, man. You know, it starts with this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, though. And those who don't seek after Yahweh Shai, you're going to be destroyed by Yahweh Shai and the angels, man. You know, and once again, the doors of mercy are closing. Do you have the garment? You know, so with that, I'd like to close on out. And in closing, I'd like to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rahak Wadash, double honors unto the head apostles of Great Millstone, who do rule well and teach well with sound doctrine, Shalom, and to the elders and the elder bishops of Great Millstone as well. Peace, love, citations, and blessings unto the hope of the elect, the men, women, and children listening and learning from the servants of prophets, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, and the hearty Shalom to those servants of prophets teaching and preaching the truth and sincerity, building up the tabernacle of David in these last days to the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yashai, giving diligence to make their calling and election sure. And last but not least, a hearty shalom to the men of valor in DTA camps, the first camps I ever heard the truth from, Isaiah 62, verses 6 through 7, ye that make mention of the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yashai, keep not silence and give him no rest day or night to Jerusalem is a praise in the earth. So once again, Lord's will, Adon Rathasai, Yahweh Rathasai, you were edified by this lesson. And until next time, Lord's will tomorrow, camp, Shalawan, DTA, Wa Ababa Ba. So, 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 Shalawan.